plan a healthy economic future for this community. Let the right actions be taken so that prosperity can be regained. Help our unemployed so they can find the proper niche in life. Bring about world peace. Amen. Amen. start our agenda tonight um, we have the uh, Roberts family here tonight and we have a certificate of appreciation for the family I'm going to read it to you uh, the Roberts family Stuart Mary Vivian and Luke in recognition of exceptional community spirit in taking the initiative to clean CB Abbott Park after a recent attack of vandalism for no other purpose but the welfare of others and the betterment of the city of Fulton, Fulton takes great pride in this family and their loyalty to the community and would like to say thank you for your efforts. If you would like to come up front, I'd like to present this to you on behalf of the mayor. And by the way, the mayor tonight couldn't be here because he is meeting with the Lions Group in a swiggle with the Industrial Development Agency and they are the ones that are looking to uh, help occupy the, the Nestle plant. Uh, Alderman Cavallaro, I, you brought this to our, if you'd like to come up. Watch them, yeah. Careful of the courts. We want another one. Yeah, don't, don't. Just kidding, <laughs> just kidding, right? Thank okay. You. <laughs> and you were involved in this. Thank you very much. Very, very good of you. We're, the city is proud of you. Here's your certificate of Thank you. First item on our agenda tonight is a resolution of respect for Robert C. Burley and some of Bob's families here tonight. I'd like to say before we go too much farther, I know uh, Bob Burley well. Uh, I, I served for a, a while with him. Robert was uh, uh, a dedicated alderman. He was also the council president for a number of years. And uh, anybody that's been here knows what you, uh, especially the family, what, what a person puts in when they're an alderman and especially a council president. And um, he certainly will be missed, and he'll be missed by me, and I know a lot of the other council people, and I know he served under several mayors. So now um, I'd like to read this, and then I would like to ask the council to uh, offer uh, the resolution. Whereas Robert C. Burley passed from this life on Monday, September 1st, 2003, at his home, and whereas Robert C. Burley was a graduate of Fulton High School and Rochester Business Institute, and whereas he was a Navy veteran of World War II and retired from Niagara Mohawk in Fulton after 35 years as a technician, and whereas Robert C. Burley was a former alderman of the Old Third Ward from 1963 to 81, 
and was the president of the Fulton County Council, and whereas he was a member of the BPOE number 830 Elks Club and president of Mount Adna Cemetery Association, both in Fulton and whereas he was an avid golfer, hunter, and enjoyed the outdoors and whereas Robert C. Burley was instrumental in the creation of the ice rink at the Fulton Community Center, North Bay Campgrounds, and worked actively in the committee to build towpath towers in the United States Bridge, and whereas Robert C. Burley was predeceased by his sister, Helen Brainerd, who passed away in 1892 after 14 years of dedicated service to the city of Fulton, and whereas Robert C. Burley is survived by his wife of 55 years, the former Norma E. Todd, two daughters, Deborah E. Jackson of Pittsburgh, Nancy R. Veshu of Fulton, his son Robert N. Burley of Fulton, six grandchildren, three great-grandchildren, and several nieces and nephews, and whereas the mayor, members of the Common Council, all city employees, and all that knew him, will sorely miss this man whose dedication to this city, his family, and friends will forever be remembered. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the mayor, members of the Common Council, share a great sense of loss with the family and friends, and do with deepest regret take official notice of the loss of this very special man. And be it further resolved that this resolution of respect be spread upon the official records of this Common Council meeting of October 7, 2003, and copies of it transmitted to the immediate family of the late Robert C. Burley. May I have a um, motion to open it? All right, sir. I'll second it. Second. All in favor? Aye. Thank you. And Joe will make sure you all get copies and transcripts of this. Thank you for loaning him to us for all these years. Second item on the agenda is approve the minutes of common council meetings September 23rd, 2003 and September 30th, 2003. I'll move it. Second. Clerk, please call the roll. Alderman Lincoln? Yes. Alderman Sahaski? Yes. Alderman Weston? Yes. Alderman Cavallero? Here. Alderman Thompson? Yes. Alderman Woodward? Yes. We, I, mean, I guess we did, shouldn't have done that. Huh? Item number three, <laughs> over <laughs> state bed. Yeah, I was still thinking mayor? about you. <laughs> Are you out of practice, Mayor? Yeah, well, a little bit. <laughs> Award state bed, salt, 2003-2004 winter season. Can I have an offer, please? Move it. Second. All in favor? Aye. All opposed? Item number four. Failure to comply, 260 West 4th Street, to Wayne property. Have a motion on this? Ed, do you want to move it? second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Item number five, public hearing, right away issue, home stall property at 255 and 259 South 6th Street. Whereas the city clerk was authorized and directed to advertise for a public hearing for this meeting of October 7th relative to a right-of-way proposal submitted by Mr. William Sell for the purpose of widening his driveway between 255 South 6 and 259 South 6, both premises being owned by the applicant. Mayor Woodward will now declare the public hearing open. Public hearing is open. Anyone here to speak on this matter? I'm speaking for my daughter, Janice Sabota. It's a letter from her because she couldn't become in person. I'm sending this letter with my mother because I couldn't attend the meeting this evening due to a conflict in my coaching tennis at JV Girls. Uh, I did have some concerns with the proposed driveway and wanted to make sure that they were addressed. I wasn't sure if the driveway would cover the entire front lawn. If so, I wanted to know about the snow removal in the winter. That part of 6th Street is very narrow, and in the past two winters, the yards was a mound of snow very high. If it's all parking, where will the snow go? Also, will the sidewalks be covered with cars? I wasn't sure if there was enough room for cars in between the houses and the sidewalk. How many cars will be parked there? In the winter, as I said, the street is very, very narrow. Cars backing straight out of that will virtually take away any parking area I have in front of my house. I also wanted to know how many families would be living in that house. I was told that it had lost its classification as a double occupancy because it had been vacated 
for several years. There seems to be room in the rear of the house by the garage. Why can't there be used for parking? I thought that there was a mor moratorium on allowing new accesses. I just wanted to make sure that these questions were addressed. That part of 6th Street also has a lot of grade school children who play along that way area. Thank you. Janice Saboda. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Is there anyone else to speak on this tonight? Please come up. Yeah, I own the property on um, 606 Highland. Um, my question is, is that driveway going to change the grade in the back next to the garage? where there's going to be a drainage problem into my property. Yeah. Are you familiar with that? Not especially. Um, I don't know Mr. Stell. Mr. Stell is here. Mr. Stell is here. I think he can answer uh, okay. most of those questions. I'm sure I understood that question. Well, he's, he's wondering if the driver will affect the drainage in, in, where he lives on Highland Street. Do you, you want to come up to the microphone, please, so everyone can hear? That was your question, wasn't it? Yeah. Did you? Okay. The grade alongside the garage used to drop off two feet. I took the stone wall out and I had to push the dirt away from the front of the garage uh -huh. to get a cement slab put in there so you get in the garage. And I put it on that side of the garage that had nothing there. I couldn't get down the mode even because of two, it was a stone wall. So I don't know if it's going to affect. I don't see how it's going to affect drainage to other properties there. My whole property slopes down and back from the street. Right. You know, the street sidewalk or the curbing isn't very high there because it's been paved so many times. It's probably about three inches high max, the curbing itself. My property drops off that feeding bottom And as long as the grade continues to drain that way, then I don't have a problem with it. But if you build that up to the level of your driveway now, everything's going to drop right off. And I don't have a wet basement now. I don't want one later. Do you, you understand what he's saying? Yeah, I believe so. You, is that that rental house right there? Yeah. OK, I know what you're talking about. Yes. There's still a couple of feet, there's still a couple of feet there before it gets there. But I mean, no, it's not going to grade. No it's not going to grade towards your house. You're not going to add any more dirt back there than is there now? When they take the, when they do the, if I get permission to do this driveway, the dirt coming out of the driveway has got to go somewhere. So I was going to put it beside that barn. And that's going to drain, <coughs> and that's going to push the water my way, is what I'm trying to say. And we don't want that water in our basement. We have a dry basement. I don't, now. I know. I, I don't know. I understand that, and I wouldn't want to do that to you either. So, is there any way we can get this so if something happens where I do get water in my basement, then I'm not going to be stuck? That's what I'm saying. Otherwise, I do have a problem. Oh. Well, I've never had water in my backyard that I know of, other than you know it's regular snow or rain. You know, so have you had any problems before? No, no that's what I'm. I don't plan. On, I'm not trying to create one. I'll tell you that. How many families? One family. It's a one-family house. No, no, it can't be made that way. And as far as the snow? So was she, Mrs. Sabota, right when she said it reverted back to a one family? Pardon? That is a one family now, it can be. It was sold as a one family house. Okay. And I talked to the code enforcement officer today, and he said because it was empty for 12 months, even though it was on the books, right. on, the, on the tax rolls as a double house or a right. two family house, it can't stay on there anymore. I had to get a permit to wow. take it back to a single family right. because it was vacated for 12 months. Right. I think that answers your question from earlier. Okay. Okay. Uh, the, the driveway is fully the There's no place to park on the street. Yeah, I, I don't. I'm not sure we answered the issue about the uh, runoff. So that's the only thing. I mean, but have you have you looked at that or? I've been by there. Well, I've been by there a million times. Did the planning commission look at that? Yeah, yeah, and they approved it. Mm -hmm. they approved it. I don't think they looked at his specific problem, but what I would like to suggest, mm -hmm. Mr. Stahl, is could you work with him, please, so that when you do this project, we can be assured that he's not going to have that problem? Is your name Keza? Yes. Okay, yeah. You, yeah. you live behind him. Well, I don't live there. I own the property. Oh, I'm, I'm one of them. So maybe before you 
to leave tonight if you want to make contact phone numbers so you can that's fine communicate that's no problem okay, okay. Will we Park in the driveway, parking in the front. That's what you're going to do, park in the front, right? You're talking about the front of the side. Driveway is going to be seven feet <coughs> long. Oh, you're not extending the driveway to make it so that you can put cars in the front? No. Oh, no. The driveway's already there. I'm just widening. Oh, that's fine. Because right now it's a sunken driveway and you can't back in it, you well, can't drive. Sometimes they make it larger in the front than they park four or five cars. Oh, no, no, no. It's, oh. it's going to be, from the street out, it's going to be two cars wide. That's fine. That's oh. fine. Any other problems, questions? Okay. As long as we just this is what I just don't want water. That's all. Okay. Uh, is there anyone else in the audience that want to speak on this subject? Anyone on the council? Need a motion to close the public hearing. All right. Can I have a motion to close the public hearing? I'll move it. Second. <coughs> All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Now, do we have a resolution for it to pass? Yes. Now, therefore, be resolved that the right of way request submitted by Mr. Stell is hereby approved. Motion? I'll move it. I'll second it. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Motion passed. Okay, item number six on the agenda. Uh, City Clerk, you advertise public hearing for proposed local law to amend Chapter 61 of Electrical Code Limited License. Uh, whereas this basically is, uh, we're adding a sentence, uh, which will say, upon recommendation of the Electrical Board, the City shall have the authority to issue a special limited license to a person who is licensed electrician in another municipality in New York State for the sole and exclusive purpose of doing electrical work on a construction project where the monetary consideration for such contracted work is at least $100,000 and provided that said license C pays a fee of $1,000 for the special limited license and electric permit fee. Mm -hmm. I have an offer to move that. I'd like to, well, we can move it first, but I was going to ask uh, Attorney Hawthorne, is there are you aware if this is a precedent or do other communities do something similar along these lines? This is language taken right out of our plumbing code. We have the same thing under plumbing. This is a request that came from the electrical board back uh, in May. And since uh, the only <coughs> very few legislative committee meetings we've had, I haven't been able to get uh, this discussed. I, I didn't really think it was that uh, complicated that we couldn't just put it out for public hearing because <coughs> um, the electrical board really wants this. It's a very limited situation with that it would apply, and certainly if you have any questions, uh, they would be glad to, to answer them, but uh, I'm just passing on their request. And, and again, it mirrors the exact language. It's in the plumbing code. It's in our plumbing code. We have, we have this in our plumbing code. <clears throat> Anything else, Joe? Any motion and a second. A motion and a second, please. Move it. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Okay, item number seven, extend bid date for sidewalk replacement, City of Fulton. Basically, uh, according to Mr. Edict, we, have, we had no bids, and so what he did is, is ask to extend the bid on the sidewalks to, uh, from October 6th until October 14th. Okay. So I got a question. Uh, does anyone on the council know why we're doing this now? Obviously, we didn't get it done in time to get it done during this. I mean, this there's season. certainly not going to be any sidewalk replacements for the next six months or so. I would just imagine would if, you, if you get bids, they will probably be what's on the list. They'll work on that. Start, they can start now? They'll start it now. Oh, yeah. Okay. I mean, the, the problem was that the money was part of the bond thing that passed. Yeah, we had to wait. Right, yeah, and then you had to wait for that to... Then you had to wait for the estoppel period after that. Right. And, you know, only now is it available to be spent. Okay. All in favor? Aye. All opposed? Pass. Item number eight, city clerk advertised for bids for repair on the final settling bases, number one and two, at the sewage treatment plant. 
Uh, basically, we will be accepting bids on Monday, October 20th, up to 2 p.m., and we'll open them at 2.15 p.m. Okay. Uh, something has to be done. And, uh, may I have a motion on this? I'll move it. Second. <coughs> All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? Item number nine, change November meeting date. I assume that's because of our election. Do you want to read that? Resolved that the Common Council meeting scheduled for Tuesday, November 4th, 2003 be moved to Wednesday, November 5th, 2003 due to election day. I'll move it. Second. All in favor? Aye. All opposed? Item number 10, City Chamberlain authorized to make budget and revenue adjustments. Joe, you want to explain that and read that? Yes, whereas the Fulton Fire Department applied for and received a grant from the State of New York in the amount of $10,000 for a community service assistance program to be used for miscellaneous equipment for the Fulton Fire Department. Said equipment is designated to assist the fire department in protecting lives and property and will also provide for the safety of firefighters and efficiency during operations. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the City Chamberlain increase the A3989 Community Services Revenue Account and increase the fire department 0.2015 account by $10,000 each. I'll move it. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Okay, item number 11, city clerk des designated polling places for November 4, 2003 general election. All right, the polling places for Tuesday, November 4th election from 6 a.m. to 9 p.m will be a war memorial for Ward 1 and 2, District 1 and 2. Ward 3, District 1 will be Lanigan School. Ward 3, District 2 will be Crossroads Tabernacle. Ward 4, District 1 and 2 will be the Masonic Temple. Ward 5, District 1 will be Towpath Towers. District 2, Fairgrave School. And Ward 6, District 1 and 2 will be Fulton United Church of, well, First United Church of Fulton, Your Honor. Okay. Mayor, um, these are all a handicap is accessible. Yes. 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 Okay. That's, uh, we, we don't do that no more without, without accessibility. That completes our agenda tonight. We have three discussion items on. You need to vote on that? Oh, I'm sorry. <coughs> I'm sorry. I thought you were just telling us where they were. Do right. you have a motion, please? I'll move it. Second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Okay, uh, that completes our agenda, except for discussion items, and there's some on here that we may want to act on. Uh, the mayor went through this with me with the Christmas decorations. I didn't anticipate these other two that are on here, so I'm a little in the dark on. Uh, Alderman Cavallaro asked to have this put on, and uh, the mayor told me that we were looking to get quotes on these. Is that correct? Yeah, okay. we, we uh, requested that. Back Actually, I pulled it from the budget January, if you remember, because yep. I asked for quotes. But I would like to tell you, it may have been you. Yeah. yeah. Um, I just called to inquire as to uh, where we are with that. If we're going to I don't think we ever got quotes, but I would like to make a recommendation to the council. I would like the council to pass a resolution tonight asking for quotes for the upcoming budget. We do not have time to get quotes for these now because uh, we usually try to get these up by Thanksgiving. The merchants usually like them up by then. I, I suggest that we go through the contract we have for this year, and I think you should do it tonight. But also along with that, I think that you should pass a resolution, not just ask, and get quotes. Um, we've never really bid this out. We've gotten quotes, and the reason for that is, uh, and I worked on this committee a couple different years, we, along with the merchants, but we never did get them to, to pay their share again. Um, we usually take what just we thought he had that. Well, I mean, they were, yeah. you know, they were here last week, beat me up, so. But anyway, uh, mainly because you have to know specifically what you want, and these are so different. And usually what happens when you go out for quotes, you'll get pamphlets and Mm -hmm. with a whole wide variety of things that the council chooses from, with a whole wide variety of prices. And what we usually do is set a budget figure that we feel we can spend, and, and then when everyone looks at it, then, then we decide what we get. So I would, uh, do you, uh, are you prepared to uh, do a resolution to execute that present contract tonight? 
Yes, I, we can do one, Your Honor. I think we should. I think we should do that, and then uh, we won't have the Grinch here at Christmas season. And <laughs> and then uh, I'd also like to follow that with a resolution to to try to get quotes before, uh, certainly before we pass a budget this year. I think if we get one, probably by the end of November, we'd be in good shape. The, the only thing I would bring up uh, when I discussed that with uh, Mr. Tetro, he was unsure of how to spec out the quote. <coughs> and we may need to talk about several alternatives when we yeah. ask for the quote. Yeah. Uh, what I mean by that, just for instance, um, if we've got X amount of lampposts between uh, Oneida well, we've got a lighting pattern. We know how many we have, and it seems but, like every year we somebody... also want to, to, to ask for quotes for lesser than that amount to make a comparison, what size, what type, and... Okay. Uh, but normally what they do is they'll... I mean, we have a packet in the, in the clerk's office on, on this stuff, or we did have a, a, a thick one. And you, normally what happens is they'll send books in and if you buy, if you, if you want at least 50 of them, it's so much per piece. And if you want to do 100, then it changes. And it's done that way. There's a, there's a great variety of mix and match when you do it. It's so, so long as uh, Clerk Tietro feels comfortable when he, if we're going to do the resolution tonight, that he feels comfortable yeah. in knowing what it is he's going to ask for. Yeah. Uh, so I'll ask you. Joe do, you, Joe, do you feel that that's... You can only do it for a certain number of polls, you know, I mean, yeah. not to exceed or um, up to or whatever. Yeah, I mean, uh, the only thing that, that uh, I remember that we did a long time ago was that uh, a committee of aldermen went out to the different places and they had a committee that actually went out and picked out what they wanted and compared prices and that's how, how they brought a new contract in. So that may be the alternative, other than um, in, uh, quoting out okay. for this year, because uh, in fact, Brandano, uh, who has a contract for this year, said what they would like to see if the city stayed with them, or if you go with somebody else, is sometime in July or something of, of next year to go to these places, pick out what you all like, and then get quotes on them, and then they, yeah. you can put it your best you know ideas into the budget and do it that way rather than than uh, setting up specs and stuff that's the way we did that one time yeah i remember that I, yeah. i'm not sure how you'd expect that i mean they plug It'd be in too very tough they well, plug in a, a light bulb you know well, yeah. no what what we did was now that you said that joe i, I believe i recall we did was we asked uh i don't know if it was brandano Mm -hmm. to put up several different uh, yep. varieties. Right. And then we had the public uh, give input as to which ones they liked, and those were the ones we, we uh, finally okay. uh, put up. Then I guess what we need to do is forget that and just the council decides on what they want to spend on them next year. And you'll right. do that shortly. R right. We, and I've got a figure for this year. And what I could do is I could get a hold of um, s some different companies yeah. in, in, in July or something, have them put up, you know, uh, some decorations around the city and get some input from the public and see which they like best. Okay. How about that? Sounds good. Is that okay? Okay, now if we get something for the contract we got? Yeah, just a, a, to, to honor the contract, a one-year contract, this would be... Um, for Brandano displays in the amount of $19,000. That's yeah. what we got in the budget. And do we have a, a, a time, a date set down? I know that the merchants <laughs> usually like to get them up before the Thanksgiving yep. season, so let's um, make sure that that... Yeah, it's before Thanksgiving, and then they take them down right after New Year's Eve. Right after New Year's Eve. Right. Okay. So we got a, we need a motion? Yes. Yes, sir. a motion on this? I'll move. I'll second it. All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? Uh, second item on the discussion is Empire Federal Credit Union ATM. I, I heard a little bit about this today when I was down at the code department after work. Uh, they want to put an ATM machine at yeah. Bullhead Point. We, we, <laughs> this has been discussed earlier this year. Um, it kind of got put on hold for a while while they had some problems with DOT as far as right-of-ways. Also, 
to remind everybody, I had written letters to all local banks and no, no others expressed an interest in putting one there. So we did enter negotiations with Empire Credit Union about putting one there. We've had proposed contract and I've had some revisions requested. The only real uh, revisions now are where exactly there it's going to go, which they do um, have a plan and the dollar figure, which um, you guys had questioned previously. And um, we had had some communication about pr in prior uh, discussions this year. And I, Mr. Hartman's here from um, Empire. Uh, he can answer any qu questions you have in that regards. Is that something you wanted to do tonight, Dave? Well, it's, it's, you could. I mean, it's something that, because of the weather issues, I think you need they, to. Now that they've cleared the DOT hurdles, they'd like to get moving on it. OK. And we do appreciate that. My name is Jim Hartman. I'm the Vice President of Branch Administration for Empire. And I know I've met a number of you folks. You've been up here several times recently uh, with a new building, which we're all proud of. Uh, one of our concerns is as we leave the west side of Fulton to, to move into this larger facility over here on 481 is leaving a full service ATM over there for the membership on that side of town as well as a uh, very low fee or in many cases no fee ATM alternative uh, for the rest of the population in the area. Uh, I think I've mentioned in the past that uh, Empire fees are about between 26 27 percent of our of our ATM transactions are feed. The vast majority are not. And that, of course, uh, is reversed in most of the banks. So we, th we see it as a real positive benefit to the community. So uh, speaking earlier in the year, we looked at uh, uh, Lake Neatawana Bullhead Point. I do have a couple of maps here. And I'd like to, there's one circulating, perhaps. I'm sorry? Well, actually, what we tried to do, and this is where I think uh, Bob Burley, as he's in the audience, uh, was very uh, uh, clever in how he placed this. We asked him to look at trying to come up with a way that would minimize the impact on future parking. You only have a scratch coat of paving down in there. The goal was to make sure we didn't take out parking spaces and also to try to make sure that we did very little to direct traffic flow down towards the pavilion. We're concerned about that. Originally, we had hoped to be adjacent to uh, Route 3 which would have worked out much better from a visibility standpoint as well as a traffic flow. But unfortunately, that's within the state, uh, New York State uh, right away for the it's highway. It's a big right away there. It's a massive right away. Yeah. So, so suddenly, we couldn't accomplish that. And I think just the, uh, 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 what you see there is a very good uh, uh, plan that, while it may look like it's in the middle now because there's not striping on the paving, I think it's designed to give you a maximum amount of paving, I'm sorry, yeah. maximum amount of parking and a very minimal impact on the traffic flow. Yep. Still maintains a pretty good visibility. Yep. Don't you find, I, I think I see this at, at your other one, that you don't usually have more than a couple cars there at a time anyway, right? That's true. Uh, the cars tend to move through very quickly. Our ATMs are directly connected to our system. Most of the, that's a very rare thing. And uh, they're connected by a uh, 56K telephone line. They're constantly in communications. There's no dial-up time. They're very fast transactions. And uh, because of that, the queues move very quickly. We see this actually as a win-win because it's a nice piece for, I, I think, a nice piece for, the, uh, for that part of town. Certainly, it's an uh, opportunity for someone to get a hold of some cash conveniently, uh, but it's done in a uh, nice way you can get in and out, but also should benefit uh, Dom's, uh, uh, the uh, uh, restaurant at Bullhead Point, as well as the other businesses out there. Any questions from the council? Do we st settle on a, a rental fee for this? Well, the, the rental fee that had been proposed was $400 per month. I passed it on to you guys, and you had some questions. I don't know if any of you have done any of your own research. Um, I believe I've, I've discussed with, uh, th through um, Mr. Kisa, who's, who's a broker that does a lot of work with Empire. He indicated to me that that's the, pretty much a standard rate that Empire uses for all its. We have paid 400 on several occasions, yeah. that's right. Um, I wasn't. Uh, like I say, I, I thought that some of you were going to do some of your own research on what others charged. Um, um, uh, do we require insurance or bonding or anything for that being over there? Or is it, is it on the state right away and we don't need it? Well, it's not in the state right away. That's, that's, that was part of the problem. Is it, it can't be. I believe that, uh, I'm not sure about the insurance issue, but the proposed contract certainly um, indemnifies us for liability of anything that they that's a problem that, that's caused by the by their facilities being there. Okay, but I mean, if somebody going to the restaurant over there, which is a, is on the city's property, backs into it or something, we're not going to end up paying for it, are we? No, they would have insurance for that. Certainly. Okay. They're going to put 
put uh, pylons or posts or whatever? Uh, we'll put metal bollard posts filled bollard. with concrete at each of the four corners. Very similar to what we have over here on uh, Mr. Porter's property. I knew we how, to council how soon are they, they looking to do this? To to well, because of the year-end concerns, I'd like to try to get this thing accomplished by a month end, yeah, which is a real fast process. Yeah. I it just got a quick question, Dave. Did you say that you did make this available to the other uh, banking institutions? Yes, I wrote letters to all other banks that have branches in town. Um, two of them responded to say they weren't interested. The others did not respond. Okay. I can say we're quite, uh, Empire is very uh, uh, pleased with the Fulton community, and we look at this as another investment in the community. Have you got an expected opening date for the new facility? Yeah, you should, uh, most of, I think everybody here should be getting an invitation very soon to a ribbon cutting November 17th. Our expectation is to be open towards the end of this month. Uh, we haven't really announced it yet. I'll let you in on a secret. The contractors think we want to be done October 24th, but we'd be happy to move in on uh, Halloween weekend. Uh, that would be our trigger. So don't, don't tell them that. Okay. okay? This is Appreciate it. Five years, John. Five years. Okay. Mayor, I have no problem with it. I'd like to move it along. Yeah, well, we, we, uh, Joe's going to do a uh, resolution here. Just so the council knows, this contract is a five-year contract. Do you understand that? You all understand what they're going to get for the lease per month? Okay. My understanding to complete the lease, uh, Bob will give us a uh, description of the ground area being leased according to the map if we're in agreement with this map. So we should make that determination as well. Okay. We'll authorize the mayor to sign a five-year contract with Empire oh, Federal Joe. Credit Union. I'm sorry. I have a question. Uh, is that going to be in a place that's lit up, or do we have to put lights around it that we don't pay for it? Yep. Let me give you this drawing so you can see. I'd like to take a look at that as well. As I think most of you know, New York State uh, ATM Safety and Security Act requires us to maintain a lighting perimeter around all of these locations. Uh, one candle power at, I believe it's measured 42 inches off the ground, 50 feet circular around the property. So we tend to light them fairly well. One of the reasons we wanted to do it at Bullhead Point was we thought that would provide an additional security piece for you folks. Uh, there's also uh, uh, camera within the ATM as well as exterior to the kiosk that will provide a security camera for your system out there. So hopefully between the lighting and the camera and all, we're going to have a more secure environment there. Okay. Perry? Yeah, so how much space is this going to take up? Are you proposing uh, the ATM and the, the, the length? The only reason is because if you've been down there on a Saturday night, you see the amount of traffic that we have in there. Actually, the parking lot can't accommodate with our traffic flow that we have there now. Um, those are just some of the concerns that I have with pedestrian traffic down in that area during a concert on, on a Friday or Saturday night. We, we realize that there'd be times when the parking lot would be pretty busy where that would not be a convenient place for people to pull in to use the ATM. That's why we do have other ones. Uh, we're hoping that the majority of the time for the people on the west side it would be convenient. Bear, is this the first time you looked at this? Yeah, it's the first time I've seen that. The, uh, I'll point out the footprint for the uh, uh, thing is in the upper right-hand corner of that drawing. You can see the uh, uh, footage. It, it amounts to a fairly small amount of actual dedicated space to it. It's nine feet uh, 8 .5 length. 8 oh, I see. <coughs> right? I don't have it in front of me, and I lose track of what those That's dimensions nine, are. nine feet. Nine feet, okay. By about just over three feet wide, I believe. Yep, three foot, eight yeah. inches. And all the, uh, what we do is we bring in all the uh, uh, utilities, of course, underground, and uh, uh, that would include data and uh, uh, security systems. This will be monitored in Syracuse, available to be monitored in Syracuse 24 hours a day, so it does provide a higher level of security for your area. So how is it lit up now? How is it? It'll be lit uh, because this one's out in the center. We can't quite light it the same way we lit the one over here, where we had ground-mounted lighting that came up. Instead, what we're going to do is it'll be roof-mounted lighting that maintains a standard of one uh, uh, candle power per square foot at a radius out 50 feet. Uh, the reason, uh, you know, again, that's New York State standard. That's twice the average uh, height of uh, uh, candle power lighting of, uh, of normal parking lot lighting. Normally, it's half at those levels, and, and this is at one full candle power. So it lights up pr pretty bright without being, uh, I don't think it tend to be obtrusive, but it doesn't leave any dark corners. We have the same uh, situation. We're putting in same lighting level over here at uh, the new branch. Um, 
before we do any more, I would like to hear from Bill. I'm, uh, I'm a little surprised that our Parks and Recreation Director hasn't been, hasn't been involved in this. We need to hear from you before we do any of this. I know originally, I'm not trying to, I'm not trying to squish any kind of project or any potential revenues the city's going to earn on this, but the problems here is originally we had talked about, and I know you had problem issues with the DOT, about being able to put that in right away with the, the most convenient spot, probably the less conspicuous as far as traffic. However, at this new proposed site, it seems to be arranging the flow of traffic for uh, the activities that go down this is putting you in the I'm looking at this truck. This is the same as the ACM main truck in front of where the last one is. Right? It's in line roughly with the rest of the line. I'll be speeding off and we've got one in the front here. Basically, it's just about raising the middle of it. It's a major traffic area that keeps pulling in and out. It's got a few cars coming in and out 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 some concerns on that. I guess, my, and, I, and I understand that, and part of sort of do what we can to try to accommodate any of those concerns. I think that once uh, maybe uh, starting in this place, it would make a lot more sense that people would see this way as, a, as the area right in the middle of everything. Uh, but uh, I'm sure that we're willing to look at working with the answer company to make sure you strike your uh, range in such a way that, uh, that that would make more sense. Right now, it seems, I think, to be in the middle simply because we do not have a, there's no lane traffic fine for that area. Right, I, I understand. Certainly traffic no, I, this way. I just know I've been down there many, many occasions at the time when that pavilion's been completely full. And, and parking down there right now is currently, currently has, has been a nightmare. Because um, we have cars lined up on Route 3. Um, my concern is that people are trying to use the ATM, people that are going to be walking and out of here in cars parking. Um, I, I don't know. That, that was the reason I don't think that's a logical choice, but that's, that's my opinion. That's all I can say there. Well, when we know people can walk up and use them, you know, you have to drive. Yeah, that, that's another point, too, actually, a traffic point. But what we tried to do was make it so that traffic could turn down in this area to turn around and exit, so that when there is a high level of traffic, people Actually, people are parking down through that walk. I think we need to define what your parking expectations are, because yeah. we're trying to fit around something that has never really been described to us. I asked Bob, who I think is as good as anyone here in the process of trying to figure out how to put this parking lot together, yeah. to design the most efficient parking in can in this area, and try to put us in a position where we do nothing and we can feed that. It's it's easy. I think we've done a fairly good job locating it there, but I'm open to any other idea that, as to where you might locate it, as long as I can stay on city of full property, because the state made it very clear they yeah, I, don't, I don't think we had any definitive plan yet as to the parking. I don't know where we were with that. So we just paved it this year, right? Yeah, uh, the only concerns I have is to make, number one, obviously, the, the availability of parking to begin with down there, especially on a, on a Saturday night, if there's an activity that's planned down there, which there will be. Um, how, excuse me, how many do you think spaces would that take up, Barry? <coughs> I know they're not defined, but... I, well, we figured there was two parking spots. We're actually, two parking spots would be committed to the ATM position. The last two on the head of it where the capital that plays there would be taken by the ATM. Uh, I believe that that's because of the way the traffic flows and width of the uh, ingress and egress points here, that that is your parking. If you were to try to go beyond that and take more than those two spots, in other words, park over here, I think you start to choke traffic. No, well, currently they do that because there isn't anything visibly marked over there. Well, that's what I was wondering, how they do it now. Yeah, I mean. they, they just the park the lengthwise as many as they can fit without obstructing mm -hmm. traffic flow in front of the tourism center. Um, yeah, can the people that are parked at the, the tourism the center back out of there safely? Is that the way they are. <laughs> parking lot travel lane widths. Okay. And that's what's accommodated here. I, I think reality is that this is what you should safely be expecting parking to be, minus two spots. That doesn't mean that people don't that people no, it's park that problem for to find Yeah. And how they accomplish that would be willing to that I'm sure they can be solved. I, I guess the biggest issue I would have would be people yeah. coming in and out of there, increased traffic and then potential problems with the pedestrian traffic. I'm just looking up the welfare. Ask yeah, him his timetable. I don't know if he has to. Let's know you pretty quick. Sure.
many ways, it's easier for us to locate in these areas here. The problem with accomplishing yeah. that is that that directs traffic adjacent to that pavilion. We tried to devise a situation where we would not be directing traffic towards the pavilion, except when people leave. Uh, that minimizes the impact of that, as you can see right here, that it should be a fairly minimal impact on those traffic lanes. Uh, but that was our goal coming to this end. It was actually two goals. We had to come to this end for two reasons. One, we had to be higher up in the parking lot because I can't let it flood. Yeah. And they tell me this area right. down here yes, is yes, it a does. flooding problem. No, never. And I also had to make sure that we uh, didn't direct traffic Floods over there. We're, Empire is very concerned about anything that would present a risk to the public. Certainly that would be. Well, I'm, 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 I know, you know, this would obviously be an obvious choice I could get over at the uh, over front markets. But obviously, you know, the DOT is that is correct. They told us that there was one thing you might be interested in knowing. They did make it clear that if you wanted to follow a procedure the state has, they feel that this uh, extra land, this extra right away is surplus at this point. They suggested to us and even encouraged us to place a bid and follow through on a surplus property law, but they also told us that would take at least two years. But it may be of interest to the uh, uh, full planning commission to know that because you could improve your part. Kim, if, if we were to uh, postpone this for a week till uh, if the council's agreeable next Tuesday, we could have maybe a special meeting on this to give Barry some time to look at it for the council to review the contract again. Just kind of short notice to bring it up tonight. Is that I, a problem for you? I, well, I think it can create some issues. Perhaps I can suggest a, an alternative. Is it possible to uh, look at this and pass this subject to a final review by Barry? Uh, such that I can then uh, speak to some of our uh, uh, contractors, tell them we expect to move forward. Right now, I can't even mobilize anybody. I can't even, <laughs> it's very difficult to go to uh, the power company, for example, and ask them how they, you know, where they're going to give me a location to bring power off of unless I have an approved site plan from you folks. So I guess if we could approve this subject to his final review, at least I'd have something to take to them as well as well, uh, my contractors. Also, you know, I haven't read the contract in a while. I didn't realize this was going to come up again tonight. There's two two different contracts, the initial one and the one we received at a later date. I don't know yeah. if the council has looked at that recently, uh, might want to scrutinize that a little bit more or whatever. That's why I'm asking for We can accomplish what you need to do, recognizing that we, we may not finish that this year. Our biggest concern is leaving an ATM on the west side when we move to the east side. And it's going to be very difficult to accomplish that if we were approved it tonight. Which is why, uh, actually the mayor originally asked that we put this on the agenda Two weeks from tonight, I believe, is the next scheduled meeting. And uh, we kind of, I won't say pushed hard, but recognizing the deadlines and the time frame, we asked that it be considered today. We appreciate anything that could be done to accommodate that. But we don't want, certainly don't want to. Jim, how about the, um, the ATM that you have right now? I mean, that's certainly you know, yes. usable. That's usable right. through November 17th. <coughs> we have been told by Pioneer we're out on the 17th. <coughs> they okay. won't uh, re, uh, renegotiate so a lease. End of the lease is and I'm out of the building season, so I mean, by then I, I'll right. take it out of there and I'll have no, nothing in until uh, sometime next spring. Oh, you're going to remove that? That one has to come out. Uh, yeah. Pioneer, they, yeah. they will not allow us to stay there. I say Pioneer at Pyramid, isn't it? I have to go back and look who it is. <laughs> the parking lot for the students? I'm not sure. I know what you mean. Oh, you mean what about the ATM there? Yeah. That has to be removed. What about the parking lot? That would be up to the uh, landowner there. We lease that facility. What they choose to do with it after we vacate on the 17th, the last day of our lease, I guess, would be up to them. I'm not sure what they intend to do. We haven't been told except that we have to be out. I think he's asking if you yeah. talk to the landlord about putting a freestanding one oh, in the yeah. parking lot. We, you mean? Yeah. we have done some conversations with them and have found that it's led us to moving to the east side of Fulton. That says it all. <laughs> <laughs> I, I guess maybe, maybe I'm confused, Jim. The east side. ATM. Is that yes. going to stay? Yes. Uh, we did a uh, uh, study of our business in Fulton a couple years ago that led to this decision to invest a large sum in the branch of it going up down the street. One of the things they keyed in on was the need for three full-service ATMs in this Fulton market and uh, recommended that we have two on 481. So it makes sense for us to leave one in the northbound lane and one in the southbound lane. At the time, they wanted our second one to go into Canal View Mall, but until the parking lot was fixed, we couldn't figure that out. Maybe it's good that uh, we're staying here. <laughs> but this gives us uh, what, the, what they suggest we need, and I think it works pretty well. I guess I feel... Uh, 
myself anyway, uh, a little uncomfortable with moving forward and would ask uh, the council if it wouldn't be so detrimental to your plans to give us till next Tuesday, if the council would agree, and then we could have a special meeting to review the contract in the interim, to give Barry a chance to look over the plans. No, I don't, it's pretty plain right here, Joe, as to what, what's planned. Um, the biggest concern I have, obviously, is, is the safety of the people that are, are using both that point. The vision the market, um, if this has been planned out to protect their safety, obviously, I, I won't have a problem with that, but, um, <coughs> My, my personal preference is I wouldn't put it there, but obviously the, the place of choice, you know, they're not allowed to do so. I mean, that's, that's all I can say. There isn't anything different that I'm going to do to review this to, to change that. That means, you, I believe, if I'm reading you right, then you're in, you're in agreement that this is the best solution, knowing we can't go by the other side of the east. Well, I don't, my own process, I, I don't like it, but that's, that's not going to be up to me to decide. I don't like it there only because it's, it's, in, the, it's in the parking lot. There's, there's five people. Well, there it appears that there isn't. Uh, again, so I, I guess that's what I'm saying, right? You're there's the best, place. other than the fact that because DOT would allow them to place it, it would yeah. make sense to put it. There really isn't any other choice that can, they can put that in there. It's council's pleasure. What do you want to do? Mayor, could I, I think we beat this. You either do it or don't do it, and we'll get in with it. Mayor, Ron? Yes. You, you know, these people, you know, I'm listening to a lot of things going on here. These people have been in this community a long time. They're trying to work with us, and we're kind of racking them over the calls. I, I, I don't see anything wrong with it. And if there's, if there's a problem, he's willing to iron it out with Barry. Let's get on with it. Let them have it. I'm, I'm going to make the motion to vote on it. Well, I, I think we're, I think, I guess this discussion, I think we're just being careful because um, uh, we've had times when we've acted too quickly and then uh, later decided that we probably shouldn't have acted so quickly without further information or at least given some more thought to it. It's going to be a roll call vote. But the, uh, I mean, yes. Been working no question. No question about it. Try to get something over on the west side. Well, like I said, as long as we can protect the people in there, that's all. My big concern is that's all. Would it help if we got that parking lot striped so people knew where they were going? Is there any plans to do that this year at all? I don't think so. I, no I, don't think so. I, don't I mean, some limited striping, at least to guide them in and out of there. We're going to talk about it with the traffic department, but I don't think they have any. Okay. The I'll, I'll talk to the mayor about it tomorrow. I mean, it certainly would clear up a lot of congestion that's over there right now. You, you know, I mean, you've been over there on the side. I know. It's yeah. And we have things going on. Yeah. yeah. Actually, I mean, uh, I, for, for the safety of people over there, that, that brings up another concern other than this. Why in heck are we loading that place up if we have no direction clearly for them to drive when they're over here? I do not understand that. It doesn't make a lot of sense to me. Uh, this project's been worked on actually for quite a while. This is not something that just come up. Well, uh, right now we have a motion and a second to, to vote on this, and we have a resolution. So um, we'll go through with it, and I would like a roll call vote, please. Can read the resolution. Uh, this would please. authorize the mayor to sign a five-year contract with Empire Federal Credit Union to install an ATM service at Bullhead Point. Uh, Alderman Lincoln. Yes. Alderman Sahaski. Yes. Alderman I'm, Weston. I'm not against it uh, from a standpoint of it's probably something we need over there. Um, but I'm just hesitant as to whether it's um, at this time without uh, looking into it a little further, whether it's a good idea to, I think Barry had some uh, legitimate questions and I don't think we're trying to prevent something from happening or uh, I think we're just being careful and uh, I think that's, so I'm gonna vote no. Alderman Cavallaro. I, uh, I don't feel we're raking empire over the coals. I've been in communication with Jim several times about this process or this prog program 
and let's get it going, and I certainly want to get it going. I just, too, want to be careful, not that I mistrust Jim, but we have gotten ourselves in a couple difficulties before because we didn't look into things yeah. a little more carefully. So I apologize to the rest of the council, to Jim, but I'm going to vote no. I asked for a week postponement. Okay. Alderman Thompson. Yes. Alderman Woodward. Yes. And I would like to say, Barry, uh, uh, what do we got scheduled from here on out over there? Uh, we got something there every week? Uh, currently, currently, there's nothing planned over there. Okay. For the remainder of this year. Okay. Uh, yeah, uh, okay, well, now, uh, I'll talk to Mayor tomorrow about getting that, that thing marked a little better because I, I can't. I can't see where it's safe operating without that thing in there. If that's if you got people going whatever way they want to go. Where is it? Okay, thank you. Uh, the third thing in the discussion item tonight, and I'm not familiar with it, Meadowbrook. I know where Meadowbrook is, but I have no idea what this is about. Do I explain this, Meadowbrook? Yeah, I'll try. Um, <laughs> This is something that, that came to me a few months ago from their attorney about a request for some relief in the city. Not, not relief, that's a bad word. Um, this isn't like the change in the pilot agreement they asked for five years ago. This is a totally different thing. And really, I just wanted to get, bring it to your attention, get it on, out here, and essentially ask that you direct me to uh, request that they come to the next meeting and explain it. Because sure. essentially what they're asking is that they have a $1.5 million loan that goes away. Um, pursuant to the way it was set up under federal law. After um, May of 1997, 10% of the principal disappears each year as long as they have, I think it's 50% low income occupancy or something like that. Right. But the interest is still around and they're trying to refinance. And in order to make that work, they need us to agree to extend the interest payments another 35 years. No, I didn't come here. I'll chew them up like I did last time. That's exactly what they asked last time. That's exactly what they asked last well, time. Well, no, last time they were asking for the pilot to be extended. Yeah, but I think that ties into it somewhere. Yeah. I think so the best thing to say is bring them on. Okay. Don't come. I will do so. Can you give us uh, some brief background you know, by way of something in writing in our mailbox? Should be in your box. Did you guys get in it? Did you get out there now? Did you get out there today? I, I sent it down today and had asked no. Joanne to put it in everybody's box if she didn't. No, no, well, we should have it by the next meeting. Have them come to the next meeting and they can, you can ask all the questions you right. want. Yep. yep. Bring them on. I didn't expect anything. Is, uh, is Carol, or, or, or CDA going to be involved in that? They're really not. They, they <laughs> administer the program, but the contracts are all between us and Meadowbrook. Okay. But they, you know, Carol certainly has some knowledge of it. I was just talking to her about all it. Right. Okay, that completes our agenda entirely for this evening. Is there anyone in the uh, audience who would like to bring something before the council tonight? If possible, I'd like to say thank you, and I appreciate the uh, cooperation of the city. So, forward to the Thank you. Thanks, Jim. Anyone else? Okay, I'll pull the council now. First word. Second word? Nothing, thank you. Third word? The Cubs play at 8 o'clock? Yeah. I'd just go got, I'd just you got, got two minutes. I got three, three quick things. <laughs> I still got to get home. First of all, I want to commend uh, Alderman Cavallero for bringing the Reynolds family here for uh, the appreciation. Uh, that was, certainly was great of the kids to pitch in there, and uh, they recognized a problem, and they cleaned it up. Uh, I have a couple others that have uh, done some work and win in the city. Um, we're certainly pleased with the uh, Youth Hockey Association that's gone over to the rink and painted and cleaned up in preparation for ice to come down. Uh, and uh, they're, they're to be commended for the work that they've done over there. Another group is the Fulton Pop Warner uh, group. Um, I uh, saw them, uh, I was passing by and I stopped and uh, talked to three gentlemen that were painting the bleachers. Uh, and uh, also talked to uh, Mike Pollock who said his brother spent a lot of time on the scoreboard. So it's those, it's those kind of volunteer things that we need to have happen in our city. Uh, I don't think we can ask the city to continually to do everything. So I was pleased to see that. That was under two minutes. Is, are you done now, Robert? A minute. Thank you. Fourth word. Well, that, thank you. Fifth word. Oh. And I have nothing. Move thank adjourn. you. Play have ball. a nice evening. Thanks for coming. Right, Harley, play ball. Motion to adjourn. Do it. All right. All right.